What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, today we're going to be talking about a gold making topic, and this is something you have to do on a limited time basis. Now, the limited time here, it's both this week and next week, it kind of rotates a little bit, so it's a gold making method that comes and goes. It's also one that we've tried several times in the past, it's a little bit risky, but when it pays off, it really pays off as well. You can make thousands of gold on this, but you can also lose thousands. It really depends on how you play your cards here, and it's a really unique gold gold making method to a season of discovery. Now before we get into the video itself I do want to say that anyone who has my gold making guide and also who have been supporting me on Patreon you will have access to this video before it goes public on YouTube. So if you want to have access to future videos before they go public check out my gold making guide through the link down below. This one gives you 157 pages of gold making information containing gold farms, crafts to do for profit, how to make gold professions, gold making tips and tricks and investments. Over on Patreon on the other hand you also get access to my TSM strings and detailed gold making posts. Every month you also get one exclusive video only available on Patreon so consider supporting me over there as well for even more gold making information. Either way supporting me on either one of the platforms that you can find in the description down below or the pinned comment will get you early access to videos and that way you can capitalize and make even more gold before they go public. Now today Today we are talking about Darkmoon Fair, and we're talking about the Darkmoon Fair cards. Now if you don't know what this is, this is a kind of a new mechanic that came into Season of Discovery, with the Dunes deck for example, the Sandstorm Trinket, we also have the Nightmare Trinket, we have the Plagues Trinket, and some of these trinkets are really useful in different versions of the game. You have the Nightmare Trinket which has a, a chance to like make enemies flee in Torment, really good in PvP, and then you have the Sandstorm Trinket, really good for AoE, and then you have the plagues leaving damage over time. So different trinkets have different use cases, and the reason why this is a good gold making method right now is that the demand for them is literally kind of zero. Darkman Fair is currently away, comes back on Friday, and um, well, uh, Monday, but it it's like Darkman Fair comes and goes. We have a Darkman Fair for one week, then we don't have it for a week, then we have it for a week again, then we don't have it for a week, and uh, whenever we don't have the Darkman Fair, Nobody can hand in these decks, so nobody's buying, well, I say nobody, but some people might be buying them in advance, but for the most part, people buy the trinkets when they want to have them. It's kind of like when you're buying a flask, you don't buy a flask one week before the raid, you buy the flask, or most people buy the flask, on the day of the raid. That is how we make gold, by people wanting what they want, and them wanting instant gratification. So for the trinkets right now, you can make a lot of gold, well, potentially, by buying the items right now when Darkman Fair is not active and selling them when Darkman Fair becomes active. For example, this happened in Wrath as well when people we, we stocked up on volatile, not volatile, whatever it's called, like we stocked up on the um the um, the life things and we sold them and turned them into cards when the Darkman Fair became available, and when Darkman Fair did not was not available, prices went to the floor. I bought all of them, and when Darkman Fair came back, the prices went right back up again. I made over 300,000 gold in the span of, what was it, 3 weeks in Wrath? Only by buying and selling certain items. So you can make a lot of gold by doing this, but once again the downsides are also kind of massive. It really depends, because you need to find people willing to buy the trinket, and for the prices they're currently listed for. So for example, for the dunes you can see here, 2, 3, 4, and 8, they're like in the green, 2, 3, and 4, they're like 40, 50, and 45 gold each, and then you have 8 being 270, you have 6 of dunes being 200, you have the ace being 40, then you have a couple of cards here being super expensive, 589 for this one, and 380 for this one. Now I suck at math, but looking at this really quickly, this is about 1.4 to 1.5k gold that you have to spend for this deck. Now, if you take a look at, for example, we can go to um, JP Worgen, there's only really been one deck that has sold at any time. 
So most of these, the, these decks are being sold in trade rather than the auction house, first of all because uh, it's easier to find customers that way, and if a deck is selling for 1.5k, a 10% auction house fee is a lot of gold, so it's much better to sell them through trade. Either way, we have a couple of registered auction house sales for 1.5k each, and that is like the bottom price. Following the graph, it's even going up a little bit for the sales here, so it's going up towards 2k plus which means if you can spend 1.5k now that is the bottom this deck has ever been going for so you can potentially make a lot of gold but you do want to have some actual capital as well now there's two ways to do this number one is only buy the cheap cards and flip those. So for example, we have this one for 40 gold, 50 gold, and 45 gold. You also have one down here for 40 gold. You could buy all of those. Let's say, let's just say you only have 500 gold to spend. You can't buy the entire deck, but you can still buy like half of the deck and try to flip those cards. So you can buy those cards now, sell those cards when the Dark Moon Fair comes back, and potentially double, triple, or quadruple your gold that way. Alternatively, if you have a lot of capital like I have, you can buy all the cards make the deck and sell the deck as well. Now the dunes is not the only one you should be focusing on, the plagues is also pretty good, even though right now on my server there's no real big um, like cut here. All of them are yellow, orange, or even red. Now you can even take a look at the wild, like off wilds. So if you take the wilds, you can find those cards as well. Some of them are really cheap, most of them are really cheap. There's a couple of really expensive ones, like you can see um, this one, 200 gold for the six, but all the other ones are literally blue. This one is blue, 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 and blue. So all of the wilds cards, they're really, really cheap on the auction house right now on my server. So two of wilds, f four, three, and five are really cheap. And the deck itself is selling for 900 gold. And that is once again right now when you can't hand in the deck. So this one could be going up in price when you can hand in the deck. We don't really know. For the most part, I don't focus on the wilds because that is the healer deck, but you also still have so many healers out there. And they recently buffed that deck. So I'm focusing on these three, mainly plagues and dunes, but you even have off nightmares so you can also put in nightmare and find that deck as well and as you can see right here there's a bunch of cards in the blue for the off the nightmare cards collection or the deck or whatever you want to call it right the only thing is you probably want to put in off nightmares or nightmare deck because right now it's also scanning a bunch of seeds so scanning here takes time but as you can see a bunch of them are in the blue so they could be worth adding to your um, scans and see if we, seeing if we can grab some real cheap cards and flip them for more gold. Now I also wanted to talk about why these cards and the decks might be going up in price, and that is because a lot of people have been focusing their gold on crafting their epics, getting enough gold for consumables, and once again, buying the seeds they need to craft their epics. I personally have two crafting professions on my main, so I need to have 20 seeds. At the current price, that is 400 gold that you have to spend only on the seeds, and then you have the flasks of mojo or whatever they called from the raid as well, you have to spend like 500 gold on crafting your epics from the professions. Now, a lot of people are doing that before they take a look at the decks, and now they might have been able to craft their epics, and they're looking to increase their DPS even further. So I've been going to the top damaging logs here, and Taking a look at a couple of them, you can see this guy, a shaman on the top 100, he's even like top 10, and if we go far enough down, you can see Sandstorm is doing 4.12% of his total damage. I just wanted to take a look at this to illustrate the power of these cards and how much of a DPS increase they actually are, and why people actually might want to spend some gold to buy the cards. 4% damage increase is quite a bit, and that is only for the Sandstorm, you also have this one, the Decay, which a Hunter was using here as you can see, Raptor Strike, Flanking Strike and all of that shit. He's using Decay, 1.19%, and another Decay card for 0.81%. Now that's not too 
cards is just two different procs. So as you can see here, this one plus this one, that's about 2% damage increase only from that one card alone right here as well. So both the Decay card and the Sandstorm card does give you quite a significant DPS increase for various classes out there. And it's probably going to be best for a lot of people. It really just depends on the class you play, right? And what trinkets you personally have access to. They're either total abyss or they're like pre raid abyss. But for many people, they're even like total abyss for this entire phase and even into the next phase, which is why people will be willing to spend a lot of gold on these decks, especially the top end raiding guilds. So buying these cards right now when the when the event is not available and you can't hand in the decks, you can make so much gold if my theory is correct here. Because once again, when the event comes back, a lot of people suddenly they have suddenly crafted their epics now, they have done some more raids, they've gotten some more gear, and they've farmed some more gold, or now they can even sell the seeds that they get from doing the raid. So they just stack up gold, they get more and more gold over time, and now they are willing to spend that gold on these cards to get that DPS increase as well. Now if you can't buy the cards, you can also farm them, and Warcraft Tavern has a pretty good post about this, showing you where to farm the unique cards. So if some of the cards are too expensive for your taste, which some of them are really expensive to be fair, so if you want to farm them instead of actually like, um, yeah, if you want to farm them instead of uh, buying them, here you go, you have the Decay card right here and where to specifically farm for the certain cards. So Ace of Plagues, Two of Plagues, all of the different ones, I'm just going to scroll through really quickly, and then you can either visit their post or post the video when you find the card that you want to farm. So there we have the plagues, we have the overgrowth right here as well, and where to farm those. And going down to sandstorm, here's the ace, for example, in Sulfarat from Chief U course. And we have all of the different Dune cards right here, and where to farm those. And then we can scroll further down to the torment. Ace of Nightmares is dropping inside the rain, so that one can't really be farmed, but it's pretty cheap anyway. So Ace of Nightmares right there, and then we have two of Nightmares, all of the Nightmares, and where to farm the different ones. So once again, some of them are really expensive, so instead of spending 800 gold on one singular card, you might be better off farming some of them, especially if you can combine that with a different gold farm. Either way, to recap, the basis of why these could be going up in price is that the supply is still the exact same, people still find the cards all over the place, while the demand is right now as low as, as, low as it can be, because you can't hand in the decks. So when you can't hand them in, pe less people are inclined to buy them, and they might just wait and buy the decks when they actually can get the trinkets from them. So right now, supply is the same, demand is lower, and when Darkman Fair comes back, demand goes up, but supply stays the same, which means the price should in theory go back up. So if you want to jump into this, once again it's a personal risk management, and let me know if you are going to be jumping in. I'm going to buy a few cards, and I'll even try to complete a full deck for myself, because if I can't sell it, I'm going to use it. So for example the Dune deck, if I can't sell this one, I'm just going to use it and get a DPS increase, right? But if I can sell it for profit, let's just say you make 25% profit every single time, if you sell 4 decks, you've basically gotten one for free. Either way, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, and I want to thank you for watching today, it really means a lot to me, the support has been absolutely massive. If you want early access to videos, once again, check out my gold making guide, or my Patreon through the links down below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video, very soon.